On a normal day for an earnest salaryman, he gets a phone call from his boss while going to his office. The salaryman tells his boss that he is just on his way to meet the client and was able to make the appointment. After the appointment with the client, the salaryman comes out while sulking, implying that the deal didn't go according to his plan. So he gets sad, as he thought he could finally please his boss. But then he remembers that he has more clients in his contacts that he can try to reach and make them invest in his company. The salaryman gets determined once again and takes an oath to work as hard as it takes, and he goes to many clients after to reach his goal. After failing a lot, he finally manages to get an agreement with the final client and hits his quota. So, he believes that his boss will finally be pleased with him and give him the promotion that he badly needs. As the salaryman starts dreaming of a new life, a criminal runs out of the police station right next to him while holding a gun. It's revealed that the criminal only managed to escape by stealing the cop's gun and shooting him as well. But the cop is not yet, and he limps towards the criminal to capture him while he is off guard. The cop manages to slam the criminal to the ground, but the criminal jitters and blindly fires a shot, hitting right into the Salaryman's heart. The Salaryman, who was just dreaming of living a new, happy life, wonders what just happened to him as he falls to the ground and bleeds to death. He wishes badly to get back to everyone to celebrate now that he finally has a promotion. But sadly, his life fades away. However, the wish he had to live a new, happy life was heard by the god, and he took pity on him because of his unfortunate death. So, the god gives the Salaryman another chance to live a happy life and reincarnates him in a world full of magic and monsters. Then, the Salaryman wakes up in the new Ice Sky world and finds himself in a typical aristocrat's outfit. His looks have significantly changed, and he looks like a younger person. But on the contrary, his black hair has turned white, and he still looks brighter than he did in his previous life. But he takes more interest in seeing the new world he is in. While he is still taking in the fact that he just got reincarnated, a heavy wind suddenly blows him down on the ground, and he sees that a giant red dragon is responsible for causing such heavy winds. This is the Salaryman's story of being reincarnated in the world of Galgardia. As the dragon flies away, the Salaryman wonders why he got reincarnated into such a world. The god communicates with him through divine revelation and grants him basic knowledge about this ice sky world. The god tells him that if he wishes to survive, he should recite the word status open to see his status. He recites the words, and a system menu pops up, showing all of his personal information in this world. On the menu, he sees that his name and his job are still unspecified and gets amazed, thinking this is just like a game. The god tells him that only his race and age were predetermined, and he can choose the rest of his stats by himself, like his name, his skills, and his job. Then the god wishes him a blessed new life and leaves his presence. So, the Salaryman realizes that he really did get reincarnated and wonders what he should name himself. He sits on the field wondering what he should name himself, and after hours, he decides on naming himself Lucille, which means light in Latin. After registering his new name on the system menu, Lucille wonders what skills he should add for himself. The options show that he can take many skills, but he chooses Assess Mastery, Martial Arts, Magic Control, and Monster Luck. Afterward, Lucille quickly chooses Healer for his job, because who in their right mind would choose being a swordsman, a mage, or a tank? Anyway, Lucille explains why he chose his job as a healer, as he was always a support unit when he was a Salaryman in his previous world. So, he still wants to be in the support unit in this world so that he can help people out and also bag some steady work. Besides, after the dragon that Lucille saw earlier, he has no courage left to face any other monsters in this world. Hence, he didn't choose to be in a fighting unit. Lucille then checks his pockets and finds three coins inside. So, he figures that this is his entire fortune for the time being and hopes to earn more in this world. Because a person is considered an adult at the age of 15 in the anime world, Lucille realizes that he is also an adult here and decides to go find work. As he walks forward, looking for a nearby town, he accidentally stumbles upon a dragon's corpse. Seeing the monster's corpse, Lucille gets terrified and runs the opposite direction as fast as he can. Lucille expresses that he doesn't want to die an unfortunate death again and takes an oath to stay far away from danger so that he can die of old age in this world. After running for a while, Lucille finally finds the entrance to the city. But before he can head in, he sees that the travelers are showing something to the gate guards. So he realizes that he needs some identification to get in. He notices that there's even a toll of four coins to get in, and he only has three on him. Still, after knowing everything, Lucille tries to get in. So the guard stops him and asks him for his ID. 
Lucille honestly explains to the guard that he doesn't have any documents to prove his identity. He also makes up the lie that he was raised in a remote village and that, when he came of age, he became a healer. According to Lucille's fake story, his village people cast him out because they thought they didn't need a healer. And that's why Lucille ended up here. Lucille tells the guard that he wants to train at a hospital if given the chance and wants to help out the people. The guard gets suspicious of him and heads inside to call for a higher up. Lucille thinks that he botched up his speech when a blonde knight approaches him, asking him if he really wants to join a clinic. Lucille falls in love at first sight and tells the blonde knight, Lumina, that he indeed wants to marry her. I mean, he indeed wants to find work in this town. So, Lumina tells Lucille to follow her to the Healer's Guild in this town. Lucille asks the guard what he should do about the toll to enter the city, and the guard reveals that they don't collect any taxes from healers. So, Lucille heads into town without any worries and runs towards Lumina to catch up with her. But he acts like a blind person and runs into three fiery, strong-looking adventurers. The gray-haired hunter gets a bit mad and asks Lucille why he is in such a hurry. So Lucille tells him that he is on his way to the healer's guild. Lucille then apologizes to the adventurer for running into him and tells him that he is not actually a healer yet because he hasn't learned how to use magic. The adventurer understands and tells Lucille not to become a corrupt healer, because that would apparently be a death wish. Lucille reveals that spreading kindness is his motto, and he strives to be an ethical person. So, the adventurers let him off, and he finally feels relieved. Lumina commends him for showing courage and assures him that if they were to lay a hand on him, she would have stepped in. So he has no need to worry at all. Lucille realizes that Lumina must be really strong considering that she is ready to take on three bulky adventurers. Anyway, the two head on their way to the Healer's Guild, and as Lucille sees that the citizens and the houses look to be from the medieval era, he confirms that he really got reincarnated in an ice sky world. Lucille asks Lumina why he wasn't charged a toll at the gate, and Lumina explains that only the Empire charges healers' tolls. According to her, healers deal with matters of life and death, so they get preferential treatment. So, Lucille really did make a good choice by picking a healer, and he thanks his skill monster luck for giving him this good luck. He learns from Lumina that healing is a special job here because this place called the Republic of Sin. Shirul is the only home to the Healer's Guild headquarters. They finally reach the Healer's Guild, and Lumina welcomes Lucille to the place, which is not loud like the Adventurer's Guilds. The Guild receptionist, Kiruru, gives Lucille a form to fill in his necessary information. Although he can't read any of it at first, he suddenly begins to understand everything and fills in his information. Kiruru greets Lumina, and by the way they are talking, Lucille realizes that Lumina must be an important person. Anyway, Lucille fills in his name and age but fails to fill in his hometown because it does not exist. He asks the receptionist, Kiruru, if writing just village would be okay, claiming he doesn't know the name of his village. So, Kiruru thinks Lucille is an idiot and tells him to fill up on anything he wants. He hands in the form to Kiruru and then asks Lumina what the name of this town is. Lumina also starts to think that Lucille is actually an idiot and tells him that this is the town of Maritoni in the Republic of St. Shirul. Lucille gets mortified hearing such a large name and promises to try his hardest to learn it. Kiruru returns to the main hall with a magic tester and tells Lucille to channel his magic into it. Lucille takes the card even though he doesn't even know how to use magic. But then he remembers that he picked a skill called magic control. So, he puts all of his focus into the card and channels his magic to reveal that he is a G-rank healer. Dude's not even F-rank. Kiruru takes back the card and heads into another room to evaluate everything. Lumina explains that Lucille's card is being registered in the Healer's Guild Magic Network, which would allow him to use it at any other Healer's Guild in this world. Kiruru confirms that Lucille is indeed a healer and tells him that he has a skill called Magic Control and has the Holy Magic Affinity. As Lucille takes his healer ID, Lumina takes her leave, as she believes her work is done here. But Lucille isn't done because he still needs to learn how to use magic and needs her help to get work into a clinic. He tells Lumina about his difficulties, so Lumina gives him three options. 1. To study hard by himself until he learns healing spells. 2. To take a loan and get into a magic school using the loan as tuition fees. And 3. To become an apprentice at the guild to do chores and learn magic in his free time. Lucille wonders which option he should pick, and because he was a Salaraman once, he goes with the first option, Spartan Training. Both Lumina and Kiruru think Lucille is very stupid for picking Spartan Training but they respect his choice. Lucille then formally promises Lumina to return the favor one day before she leaves the guild and goes to his room, as shown by Kiruru. Inside his room, Lucille finds a spell book on the desk and begins reading it right away. 
He thinks he can get all of the information inside his head in 10 days. He learns the basics of magic and decides to test it. First, he forms a mental image of a wound in reverse and recites the spell to activate the healing. But almost nothing happens, and he only feels a little something leave his body. So, he opens the system menu and realizes that the only reason he is not performing well is because his holy magic affinity is at the rookie stage. So, Lucille keeps practicing until he runs out of magic points and gets a severe headache for using all of his mana. So he takes a rest and sees that his mana has recovered the next morning. For today, Lucille decides to improve his skill level and keeps practicing his magic to perfect it. He keeps repeating the routine of reciting magic but stops before getting exhausted. Then he practices his magic handling to master his magic while his MP is recovering. After repeating the process over and over, Lucille sees that his stats have gone up. A maid of the guild named Monica brings Lucille some food, and he falls in love with her, ditching Lumina. That's sadly it for the side character as Lucille returns to training. On the third day of training, he finally succeeds in chanting the healing spell. Afterwards, he takes an evaluation test again, and Monica confirms that he is now able to use healing spells. Monica asks for a silver coin for renting the guild room, but upon learning that Lucille is Lumina's guest, she immediately returns it and apologizes to him. Monica explains that Lumina is a big deal and is actually the captain of the church's female paladin regiment. So, Lucille realizes that he only ran into such an important person thanks to his monster luck skill. Lucille then heads out to town to make some money, as he has heard that he can earn loads of money by simply healing people. So, he looks for an adventurer's guild to work there directly as a healer. As he is on his way, the three adventurers that Lucille previously ran into call him. The gray-haired adventurer named Bazin tries to pull Lucille's leg when a group of heavily injured adventurers comes there. They think that they don't have any hope left because the clinic won't accept them if they don't offer enough money. So Lucille decides to heal them for free, being the only good guy in town. Lucille meets with Monica, who tells him that there are not many healers because it is very difficult for the healer guild to censor healers. She explains that if a healer decides to behave wrongly by asking for extravagant fees, there is no way they could stop him from doing that because they will also feel the healer is also needed in society, so they can't let him go. When he hears their worries, he promises her that he will ensure he is a good healer and do his best to take care of the people and not use his skills for his gain. After he leaves her, he goes to the street, where he sees some injured adventurers. He goes nearer to them and promises to heal them all. Although he is nervous and scared because he hasn't been in that situation before, he also summons his courage, and the want and wish to heal them makes him more encouraged to do something. He goes to the front of the first victim, reassuring her that he will heal her. He does his chant, and after he finishes his change, he calls heal, but to his shock, his magic doesn't work. One of the adventurers around asks him what he is doing and if he is sure he can heal the injured ones. He apologizes for what had happened and says it was his mistake. He tries to think of where he has gone wrong, especially because he knows he doesn't have enough magic power at that moment and wasting it without healing anyone won't do any of them a favor. He figures that the mistake he made was that he didn't use his mind to figure out how the magic would work because he did it. He realizes that for the magic to work, he has to create a mental figure of how an injury can heal by itself and be made whole, so that is the only way he can do it. He imagines an injury getting healed, and he calls the chant. This time around, he succeeds, and the wound heals. He goes ahead to heal the others, he does all he can for a while, and eventually, it remains just one of the injured ones. As he is about to walk to him and heal him, he sees that his power remains just one, and he is getting weak. He hopes that he will be able to heal the last person before fainting, but his eyes keep closing suddenly. He falls, and he can no longer carry himself. He realizes there is no way he could succeed in healing the last person, and he feels very sad as he hears the voices of everyone around him trying to beg him to rise so the last person doesn't die. Unfortunately, he collapses and blacks out, and the last person dies. He wakes later, and he sits on his bed thinking. He feels bad that he couldn't save the life of the last person who needed his help, and he remembers the words of the adult there who told him that he shouldn't blame himself because what had happened wasn't his fault. He had succeeded in healing a lot of people before the last causality. While he wants to be encouraged because of his success, he is also discouraged because of his failures. He feels bad that he couldn't do anything. He realizes that he has to grow his healing power and level up if he wants to heal people like he wants. He assumes that the only way he could do that successfully without any issue is by registering at the Adventurer Guild. 
He feels if he does that, he will be able to level up quickly and he would be able to increase his power. He goes to the guild, and immediately he enters the guild. He is amazed by how the guild looks. It looks beautiful and amazing, and he wants to be part of them. He meets the attendant and tells her he wants to register at the guild. She tells him he is welcome, and she gives him a form to fill out. He takes the form and fills out the information. He returns the form to her, and she tells him that he has martial arts skill, so he would be able to register at the guild. He wonders if he wouldn't have been able to register at the guild if he didn't have any martial arts skill. She tells him that since he has a skill, he would be able to join them, and she has to explain how the adventurer lifestyle works. She tells him that he will take a mission at the guild, and after he successfully does the mission, he will return to the guild to get his money, and he will pay the guild 10% of the money as an operational fee. He listens to her well and asks her if he will be punished if he fails the mission. She tells him there are fees to failure, so he should manage himself well and ensure he doesn't fail any missions. He feels very scared upon hearing that. He asks her if there is a specific mission for healers. He says he is a healer, and he doesn't know how to fight well. He claims if it is possible that he would be able to train on how to fight as well as work as a healer. He asks her if someone can train him there and if he would pay for the training with his services. She says she needs to tell her master first. She asks him to stay and wait for her while she calls the guild leader. She returns in a few seconds, and she comes with a huge man. When Lucille sees the way this man looks, he gets very scared. The man is so huge, and he looks scary. He tries to gather himself back, reminding himself that it is not the first time he is seeing a scary person as when he was in the other world. His boss was also very huge and scary, and there was no one he could meet in this world that could be worse than the other world. So he decides that he would pretend to be fine. He pretends and looks at the man who calls him Kid. The man asks him what he wants, and he explains again that he wonders if he could work at the guild as the guild healer while someone trains him in martial arts. The man asks him why he wants to train himself to fight. He reminds him that he is a healer and that healers don't need to learn to fight. Lucille explains that the reason he is doing that is because he doesn't want to be a burden to anyone. He says that the way he is weak, if he confronts a monster, he will be killed, and he doesn't want to lose his life that day. The man tells him he has heard and asks when he wants to resume. He tells him that he would be paid one coin as his wages and his training fee would be removed from his wages. The man tells him he can resume immediately, but Lucille says he would like to resume in five days. The man tells the attendant to take care of him. The lady introduces himself as Nanela, and she smiles broadly at him. He smiles at her immediately, and he tells her his name too. Suddenly, he feels eyes are looking at him. He turns and sees some men looking at him. The man in front of him coughs, and the man leaves his back. He assumes that the man also occupies a high position in the guild, and the man introduces himself as Broad, the guild leader. Lucille appreciates Broad and leaves fulfilled. He returns home, and he is glad that in a few days, he can get stronger. As he reminisces about what kind of future awaits him, Monica enters the room with his food. She tells him that she has brought his food and asks him how his day went, and if he could achieve the things he wanted to do. He tells her that he went to the guild, and they have agreed to train him in martial arts. She is very proud of him. Before she leaves, he asks her what level he has to get to as a healer for him to be taken as a professional. And she tells him that if he can reach level 5 before he clocks 20, he can be taken as a professional. Thinking about it, he has to add a level per year, and he wonders if he could do that. She tells him that if he can achieve that, he will take her out on a date. He is shocked to hear that, and he doesn't expect she could say that. He wonders what she means by a date and he encourages himself that he will achieve it so he can take her out on a date. A week later, he resumed his training. His crash course in holy magic went in a flash, and he is finally done. He returns to the Healer's Guild, where he meets Kiruru and appreciates her for staying with him and helping him. He says that he has finished and he will be leaving Hao. She tells him he is very good and is a great healer, so much so that he even has work waiting for him before he finishes increasing his affinity. He again appreciates her and attempts to leave, but she tells him that if he sees Lumina, he should appreciate her too. He promises her that he will check up on Lumina the next time he comes around. He goes to the guild, and immediately he enters, he sees several eyes looking at him. He says the stairs feel familiar, as if he was attending his board meeting and had low sales. He goes to the attendant, and it is another attendant this time and not Nanela. He introduces himself and tells her that he is the new adventurer who is to start training with Broad. So she tells him he should go underground and he will find the training center. When he arrives, he sees Broad but notices he is the only one there. Broad gives him hard stares that send shivers down his body, but he doesn't want to seem weak, so he pretends he is alright and greets Broad. 
Rod says he is shocked that Lucille didn't run away after seeing how he looked at him. He tells Lucille that they are the only ones training, and Lucille feels scared again but feels it is not as much as what he went to on Earth. He bows and says he is ready to learn, and Broad tells him he has guts. They start the training, and Broad asks him to run. He keeps running till he gets exhausted. He calls Broad wicked but admits that he lives a happy life compared to his life on Earth and how he died. He claims he is in heaven, and he suddenly faints due to exhaustion. After he recovers, Broad sits on his back and screams so loud. After that, Broad asks him to fight him. He throws his first leg at Broad, but it is so weak. Broad asks if that is how far he can get, and he says that is why he is training to get better. After their training that day, Broad tells him that he should learn to train well and exhaust himself. That way, he would be able to grow better. He gets injured and attempts to use his magic to heal himself, but Broad refuses, saying that if he heals naturally, it will increase his healing strength. He decides to do that, and Broad also teaches him how to increase his strength. He appreciates Broad but asks why there are no other adventurers training. Broad tells him that young adventurers don't have money, so they go straight to taking missions instead of training and getting injured in the forest. He says he wants to bed Lucille to ensure he heals everyone, irrespective of age and race, and Lucille promises to do so. Some injured adventurers arrive. At first, they assume Lucille wouldn't heal them, but he heals them without collecting money. He realizes that healers really have a bad image in that country. He returns to Broad, telling him that he can only heal eight people at once, and he wants to increase the numbers. Broad tells him that can be done if he exhausts himself and sees how far he can go. Although he knows that would be stressful, he admits it's in his favor, so he decides to do that. Before leaving the guild, Broad asks him if he would like to live in the guild. He wonders what he owes that favor, and Broad even says he would be given food thrice daily. That seems like a jackpot, so he asks what Broad will get in return. But Broad says all he wants is his adventures to stop dying unnecessarily. Lucille promises to do his best and also asks if he can also heal any other person that comes to him. Broad says that the world will be a better place if every healer is like Lucille. Seeing how things are going in his favor in the new world, Lucille agrees he has found a good place to settle. Broad tells him that if all the healers in the world are like him, the world will really be a better place. He says that even though he wants Lucille to live there during his training, he also wants to restrict Lucille from going out of the guild during his training. This means that during his training, he won't step out of the guild at all, that seems perfect to him. But he remembers all the stress he had gone through on that day, from the mad dash to the other training he did. He wonders if he is ready to do that every day of his life without any rest. He decides it isn't a great gamble, and it wouldn't be easy for him to do that for a long time, so he asks Broad if he can make the contract for just a month. Broad says it is okay, and he may decide to work for just a month. He says that during this month, he must leave himself to be used at every time, and he doesn't have a right to complain. He tells Broad he is also ready to train. He thinks about the fact that he would have a free roof over his head and he would even get free food. That is more than enough for him to get excited. He, however, sees that the deal is a little too much because there is not much benefit on the guild's side. He asks Broad if the guild master wouldn't be angry that he had made such a deal, and Broad tells him that he has so much influence at the guild and that what he does is final, so Lucille doesn't have any reason to be scared. Lucille is so excited about this. After his training, he goes to fetch some water to have his bath. When he pours the water on his head, the water is very cold, and he gets color. He shivers and screams, and Broad comes to meet him and throws some clothes at him. Broad leaves him and tells him that when he is done, he should meet him at the cafeteria. He takes the clothes and wears them. He feels better putting it on, but he wonders what will happen to his former clothes. He holds the clothes in his hand, and he smells them. The clothes are so dirty, irritating him so much that he screams and removes it from his face. He hears someone laughing behind him, and he turns. He sees that it is Nanella. He asks her how she is doing, and she says she is good. She appreciates him for healing the adventurers injured the other time, and he tells her it was a pleasure because he also loved healing people. He asks her what she has come for, and she says Broad has sent her to take his clothes and wash them. Although he is excited that he has seen someone wash his dirty clothes, he refuses to show that excitement so it won't look like he is using her. He rejects her offer and tells her she doesn't have to go that far for him. She gets very sad, and she asks if he is rejecting her because he does f want her species to touch his clothes. Her ears come down, and she gets very disappointed. He tries to tell her that it isn't that way. He tells her that he is rejecting her because he doesn't think it is okay for someone as beautiful as she is to be washing his clothes. She smiles back at him, and her ears come back up. 
She tells him he doesn't have to worry about that. She jumps towards him and takes the clothes away from him, telling him that it is her duty. She says he will find his clothes among those she will wash at the guild's laundry. He appreciates her and asks her what he can do for her in return, but she tells him he doesn't have to worry about any of that. He promises himself that he will repay her efforts by doing something to help her. She tells him where the cafeteria is and he meets Broad. Immediately he enters. The atmosphere seems the same as when they are having a team dinner. Everyone there is eating happily. And he sees Broad, he walks to meet Broad, and he sees a large amount of food on Broad's table. He asks him if they are having a party, but Broad tells him the food belongs to only him. He wonders how Broad could expect him to finish that large amount of food. But Broad tells him that he should eat it slowly, but he should ensure he finishes all the food. Broad attempts to leave and tells him that he should come to meet him in the basement when he is done with the food. He looks at the food, wondering if he can finish it, but he assumes it could be another training from Broad, so he decides to finish it. He appreciates them for the food and starts to eat. When he takes the first bite, he feels like he is on top of the world. The meal is so nice and he enjoys it. In some minutes, he finishes the food and he goes to meet Broad. Broad takes him to his room and tells him where he will stay during his training. Before Lucille goes inside the room, he asks Broad if there is anyone he needs to heal before he goes to sleep. But Broad tells him there is no one for him to heal and he should enjoy his night because he will use him a lot the following day. He assumes that since he has an extensive schedule the following day, he should take his time that night and rest well. He remains on the bed and covers himself for a while, but he sees that he isn't feeling sleepy. He wonders why he should sleep then and realizes he doesn't even know the time. He checks the time, and he sees it is just a few minutes after 7. He considers that an average person shouldn't be sleeping that early, and he says he doesn't want to sleep. Since he isn't feeling sleepy, he decides to use that time to train himself a little and increase his level. He starts his stretching, healing, and mediating schedule, and he repeats it for about three times before he eventually sleeps off. The following morning, Broad calls out for him and tells him it is time for breakfast. He goes to the cafeteria, and Broad tells him that is where he will be having all his meals till he finishes his training. As he speaks with Broad, the chef comes there. Broad introduces him to the chef, Golger. Golger also speaks to him and tells him he is in charge of the cafeteria. As Golger speaks, he sees him as a bear, and he assumes Golger is from the bear clan. He can't stop himself from training to confirm if his thoughts are right, so he asks Golger which species he is from. Golger tells him he is from the wolf folk, and Lucille is excited to meet another species in that society. Golger brings his food for him, and before eating, Golger also brings a cup of drink for him, asking him to drink it. The drink looks for weird. Not only is the color a little off and unusual, but the tea also looks like it is moving, and there are sparkles coming out of it. Golger tells him that the tea was prepared by the Sage of Time, and the tea can increase a person's strength, resistance, and power, and it can work over the phrase of six hours. It is so powerful that everyone who drinks it can acknowledge its great works, but people avoid the tea because of how terrible it smells and the horrible taste. He asks Lucille if Lucille would like to drink it, considering that Lucille needs the advantages of the drink. Lucille also feels the benefits are more important than how the drink smells or tastes, and so he decides to drink it. However, when he carries the cup and puts it nearer to his nose, he feels like throwing up. He feels so irritated because of how the drink tastes. When Golger asks him to drink, he is also covering his nose. He still wishes to drink it because of its advantages, hoping it wouldn't taste as it smells. He eventually takes a sip of the drink, and at that point, it is game over. The drink is drawing on his tongue as if it wouldn't move. He feels like going to a stream of water and putting his mouth into the water and washing off every taste of that tea from his mouth and throwing up. However, seeing the wolf in front of him makes him more nervous. He finds it very difficult to throw up in front of Golger because he assumes he will get angry, so he feels he has no other choice but to drink the tea. He also names the drink Substance X. He eventually takes the entire gulp, drinks the tea entirely, and puts the cup on the table. When Golger is shocked, he can't imagine that someone will finish a tea at once, and he says the boy is really daring. Rod is also watching him from afar. He sees what Lucille has done, and it encourages him that Lucille is really ready to learn. Lucille feels an overflow of energy inside of him when he finishes drinking it. He feels so strong, and he realizes that the drink works. Golger tells him to eat his food and go and meet Broad, so he eats his food and goes for his training. Eventually, he spends a week at the guild training. He trains with Broad, who hits him repeatedly until he falls. Even after he falls, Broad asks him if he wants to give up and says that when he is defending, he has to defend by putting his mind there. 
Broad hits him until he flies in the air and falls again. He tells himself that he wouldn't give up. He promises himself that he will fight Broad and win, so he smiles at Broad so they can continue. Broad asks why he is smiling in that situation. A cat folk adventurer comes to him injured, and he heals her. Her party members come to Lucille and appreciate him for healing the beast folks too. He tells them there is no difference between humans and beasts. They ask him how he is managing to train to Broad and say every adventurer avoids Broad. He wonders why he didn't hear that before. He goes to eat, and he also drinks Substance X again. He notices that on his way out of the cafeteria, some people are looking at him and hiding. He returns to his room, wondering why they are looking at him. He trains from 7 am to 7 pm, eats three large meals per day, heals adventurers, and drinks Substance X with no other daily routine, so he doesn't know why people are sneaking out on him. The following day, he asks Broad and Gulger if they know why, and he finds out they are the ones who sent the adventurers to watch him. Broad tells him how many adventurers get injured every day and say they are watching him so he doesn't run away. He promises them that he won't run for the one month he promised and tells Broad to call his watchers off. The one month runs by quickly. He starts training how to attack by throwing stones on the dart. He wonders when he will be allowed to throw a weapon and figures one month is actually too little for him to learn everything. But he decides to do it slowly. He smiles and says that with patience, he will get it right. Eventually, one month runs out, and he meets with Broad, who asks him what he wants to do next, and he says he will be returning to the Healer's Guild. He says he needs to pay his offering, and he needs to make money too. Broad asks him what he will do if he sees someone to give him enough money to pay his offering for a year, and he says he will return to train, so Broad gives him enough money for his offering. He is reluctant to collect it at first, but he eventually does so and promises to come back after paying. He goes to the guild to pay, and the attendant asks him if he is making the right decision. But he says he wants to train better and stand on his own. He leaves and returns to the guild. He sees that Broad is waiting for him at the reception, and Broad is excited to see him. Broad asks Nanila to renew his card and drags him away. That night, Broad gives him a book titled The Encyclopedia of Low-Level Healers and tells him that healers need to learn to cure and heal, but he knows how to use only heal at the moment, so he should read the book and learn well. He is shocked that Broad is actually still sweet inside of him. Broad leaves, and Golger gives him Substance X to drink. He drinks it regardless. 